Thanksgiving is here, and that means Texas high school football is at its best. These are the picks. Welcome into the picks, your guide to the Texas high school football weekend. My name is Greg Tepper of Dave Campbell's Texas Football and TexasFootball.com. Thank you so much for tuning in, and happy Thanksgiving. Uh, folks who know me or have watched Texas Football Today or any of our various and sundry productions know that Thanksgiving is my very favorite day. It's the best day of the year. And it's because you get to eat, you get to hang out with family, there's no presents to buy, and oh yeah, you get a ton of football. And that is especially the case in the Texas high school football ranks where we have now reached the regional semifinals, the third round of the Texas high school football playoffs. There's 88 games scattered throughout the course of the weekend. There's no games on Thursday. No coaches have the courage to play on Thanksgiving. We'll try again next year. But there is a bevy of games on Friday and a bevy of games on Saturday. And the great thing is games start at like 10 a.m. On Friday and go all throughout the day so you can feast on Texas high school football all week long. We've got huge games everywhere you look across the state. I'm picking every single one of them, all 88 of them. I'm either going to mention it out loud or it's scrolling on this side of the screen. We start in East Texas. 2 o'clock Friday afternoon at Pirate Stadium in Longview. It is a matchup of unbeatens in the regional semifinals of the 4A Division II bracket as the Carthage Bulldogs take on the Pleasant Grove Hawks. What are the keys to this matchup? Key number one, cracking the code. For all we talk about Carthage and their fun offense and the offensive wizard that Coach Scott Surratt is, their defense has been their calling card this year, and it has been exceptional, giving up about 10 points per game. Guys like Clayton Ingram uh, and James Morrow leading the way on a unit that ranks second in all of 4A Division II in scoring defense. They have been exceptional. They have a huge test in front of them in Pleasant Grove, which has one of the most explosive set of weapons in the state of Texas. Their offensive line has been excellent, led by Caleb Hackleman, but the playmakers they've got all around that offense, including running back Jaden Bordley, really set them apart. Nobody has been able to crack the code on the Carthage defense. Can Pleasant Grove be the first? Key number two, same position, different roles. Let's focus on the quarterback spot here for a moment in this showdown because it's a really interesting dynamic at play. For Pleasant Grove, they've got Akari Johnson, the Arkansas commit who has moved over to play quarterback. And you might be thinking, well, he's just an athlete playing quarterback. And I would tell you, you're wrong. Plain and simple. This guy is a complete quarterback back there. He can throw, he can run, he can do everything, and more importantly, he's a field general out there. And Coach Josh Gibson really trusts him with the controls of this offense. He has been dynamite. Make no mistake, he's very dangerous when he runs, but when he throws, he can make you pay as well. On the other side, for Carthage, it's quarterback Jet Surratt. The son of Coach Scott Surratt, the sophomore, has really settled into the role and now I think is an additive for this offense. I think early in the year, they were kind of spoon-feeding him the offense and kind of giving him some easy throws. Now, they're letting him cook. He's going out there and throwing the ball all over the yard, and he has been very, very good with the football of late. It's an interesting dichotomy in the quarterback position. So in this massive showdown, which of these quarterbacks shines brightest? In key number three, coaching showdown. So let's take our eyes off the field for a moment and move to the sidelines because I think this is a really special matchup of two of the very best coaches in all of high school football, hard stop whether you're talking about Texas or anywhere else in America. Because Scott Surratt versus Josh Gibson is box office. These two guys are two of the very best coaches in the state. They have combined for a career record of 320 and 63. Yeah. They've been exceptional. Now, Scott Surratt's got the nine state championships. Josh Gibson's got a pair of titles of his own. This is one of two matchups this week of multiple-time state champion coaches. The other one is Westbrook and Borden County in the six-man ranks. These are two exceptional coaches, and they're going to be testing one another. There's a chess match at play because these two teams have a number of strengths and some weaknesses that are going to need to be exploited. There's going to be a couple moves made in this game, not just halftime adjustments, but in-game adjustments. Which of these coaches is able to push the right button at the right time to put their team over the top? Who am I picking? I'm going with Carthage. The defending state champs get the nod here on the strength of their defense, which has been so lights out. Furthermore, I think the balance they have offensively with not just Jet Surratt, but also K.J. Edwards running the ball has really made this team 
difficult to game plan for. This is one of those games where Carthage probably wants to keep this game relatively low scoring. They probably don't want to get a shootout with this Pleasant Grove team because Pleasant Grove's got weapons. We didn't even mention Lance Jackson, their outstanding tight end slash defensive end. They have playmakers all over the field, and that's going to be a real challenge for this Carthage defense. But the Carthage defense has faced down tough challenges before, and they've come out better on the other end. I think this game is a classic. I think we're in for a whale of a ball game. But I think that the Bulldogs keep rolling. I think the state's longest winning streak rolls on. Give me Carthage. Let's go to the 6A Division II bracket. 7 o'clock Friday night at the Alamo Dome in San Antonio. It is a cross-regional matchup of unbeatens in Region 2 as the defending state champion DeSoto Eagles take on the Willis Wildcats. And DeSoto is looking the part of a defending state champ. They've been excellent. And that win over Duncanville only solidified them as the team to beat in 6A Division II. Quarterback DJ Bailey has been great. They're getting healthy. Tiger Ryden, their star running back, returned last week from injury, which is very important for them. And I think their defense is playing their best football right now, which is good because they're facing off against Willis and this high-powered attack led by the best quarterback in the state. DJ Lagway at Willis has been unbelievable. Unbelievable. One of the very best players in all of Texas. Hard stop. Over 4,000 yards passing. They've really let him start running the ball more, and that makes them all the more dangerous. But if you pay too much attention to him, you're going to miss out on a lot of the other playmakers they got, like wide receiver Jermaine Bishop and their running back Terry Lawrence. This is a balanced, dangerous attack that this DeSoto defense has got to be ready for. The Willis defense is the key here. They have got to make some plays to keep them in this game and allow this offense to have room to operate because this DeSoto defense is probably going to come up with one or two stops of their own. This game is fascinating, and if you're a prospect hound, I don't know how you can't be at the Alamo Dome on Friday evening. Got to go with the champs, though. I think DeSoto moves on to the regional final. 12.30 12.30 Friday afternoon at Memorial Stadium in Hutto. It is a 5A Division I regional semifinal between the College Station Cougars and the Smithson Valley Rangers. Do you remember this game last year? Because I have not stopped thinking about it. What an unbelievable finish it was. Smithson Valley, trailing by a score, had the ball inside the five-yard line and had seven chances to score, and the College Station defense stoned them seven times. And now they're going to meet up again. You better believe that Smithson Valley has not forgot about this, especially uh, the playmakers they've got on that defense. Jackson Maynard leading the way. they got a running game with Cade Spradling. This is a very Larry Hill ball club. It's running game and defense, and their defense has been absolutely lights out. What does this defense do with a problem like College Station? Because Aiden Martinez-Brown, their running back, has been great. Quarterback Arrington Maiden, I think he's really grown in in the role there. He's been fantastic. Can this College Station defense make some stops against the running game? Look, here's the the bottom line of it. Let's cut through it. This game's going to be close. Okay, This game's going to be down to the nitty-gritty. It would stun me if this game was a blowout. So which of these teams can have the juice in the final moments? Plain and simple. That's what this comes down to. This game is so much more between the ears than it is on the field. Which of these teams has the mindset and the wherewithal and the grit to come away with those one or two plays that are going to put them into the regional final? I've been riding with College Station all year long. I ain't hopping off the bandwagon now. I think this game is an instant classic again, but I think the Cougars are through to the regional final. 6 o'clock Friday evening at Lions Stadium in Vernon. It's a 3A Division I regional semifinal between the Paradise Panthers and the Bushland Falcons. And low-key, like the quarterback matchup of the weekend? This game, from a signal caller perspective, is a lot of fun. Austin Iglesias for Paradise has been one of the most exciting players in the state. He had six total touchdowns last week in their area round win. Uh, He has been spectacular all year long leading this Panthers charge. On the other side, people know that I've been on the Dawson Jaco bandwagon for quite a while, and his numbers have made me look smart. Thanks a lot, Dawson. This is going to be a really fun matchup between two high-octane offenses, so which defense has the answer? That's the real question in this one. This game's going to be close. I think Paradise's defense has been a little bit more consistent. That's why I give the Panthers the edge. I think Paradise moves on to the regional final. 
One o'clock Friday afternoon at Bruce Field in Athens. It is a 2A Division I regional semifinal between the Timpson Bears and the Honeygrove Warriors. Remember Honeygrove? We were talking about them like earlier in the year uh, about the crazy numbers they were putting up. It was no points, no punts, right? They had been unbelievable defensively and they'd been scoring pretty much every time they had the ball. Then they lose to Cooper and we all kind of forgot about them, right? Like, oh, well, that was a fun story. They didn't go away. And they've been really humming of late. That defense has been exceptional. They were great last week against Centerville. And Rylan Morris is a name you need to know. He is a two-way star for this Warriors squad. Uh, he is going to be a name to know for the next couple of years as well. He is a young man who is going to be making headlines across the state. Now, this Honeygrove defense, which has been so good all year long, they get their biggest test of the year and really the final exam, right, with Timpson and quarterback Terry Bussey, the Mr. Texas Football Player of the Year, who's looking like Mr. Texas Football. He's been spectacular on both sides of the ball. Now, Timpson's struggling with injuries right now. J.J. Garner, their star running back, did not play in the previous game. I understand they lost an offensive lineman injury in the last week's game as well. So how healthy are they? Can this Honeygrove defense find a way to slow down the most dynamic player in Texas high school football in Terry Bussey? And can this Honeygrove offense find a way through what's been a very good Timpson defense? I think this game's got a chance to really steal the show, but i got to give the edge to Timpson. Give me the Bears. And we're into the regional finals of six-man football. Six o'clock Friday evening in Hermley is a 1A Division II regional final between the Jayton Jaybirds and the Benjamin Mustangs. The defending state champs in Benjamin really begin their title defense now, and they've been exceptional, right? They've got the most exciting player in six-man football in Grayson Rigdon. Nobody's been able to slow him down. He is Superman out there, plain and simple. I've said it before, I'll say it again. But last week, they got into a wild shootout with Newcastle, 112-84. to 84. It's the highest scoring six-man game this season, and nobody slowed down Grayson Rigdon because nobody's slowed down Grayson Rigdon. But also, are there concerns on the Benjamin defensive side? And does that open the door for a team like Jayton, who has an outstanding defense led by Aiden Salazar, and their passing game and the weaponry they've got, led by quarterback Sean Staniland? They're a challenge. They're a challenge. I've been talking with some six-man coaches across the state of Texas who believe that this is the team that can knock off Benjamin. It's going to be a fantastic ball game. Can Jayton find a way to do what nobody else does, which is contain Grayson Rigdon? And can the Benjamin defense step up and find some stops against what's been a high-powered aerial attack from Jayton? A ton of storylines in this one. i got to go with the defending champs, though. I think Benjamin gets it done and moves on to the state semifinal. But those are far from the only big games in the regional semifinals of the Texas High School Football Playoffs. Remember, if I don't mention your game out loud, it's scrolling on this side of the screen. Let's get to the lightning round. In 6A Division 1, I think Allen edges Midland Legacy and give me Spring Westfield over Rockwall. And in a huge game in Houston, I think Galena Park North Shore wins a close one over Cy Fair. 6A Division 2 now, I like Fort Bend Hightower over C.E. King. Give me Cibolo Steel over San Antonio Harlan. And a matchup of unbeatens in DFW, I like Byron Nelson in a close one over Coppell. To 5A Division 1 we go, I think Abilene stays hot with a win over Justin Northwest. PSJA North beats Brownsville Veterans Memorial in an All-Valley Regional Semifinal and give me Forney to take down Richland. To 5A Division 2 we go. I like Lovejoy over Texas High, and give me Frisco Emerson over Wichita Falls Rider. The PNG defense stands tall. I think Port Natures Groves beats Montgomery Lake Creek, and I like Corpus Christi Flower Bluff in a close one over Liberty Hill. 4A Division 1 we go. I'm going with Decatur over Lubbock Estacado, and in a game that's got the most pedigree of any in Texas high school football, I like Salina over Stephenville. Alice edges Port Lavaca Calhoun, and I'm going with Iowa Colony over Tyler Chapel Hill. In 4A Division 2, I like Glen Rose over Seminole. Wimberley stays hot with a win over Ingleside, and it's a matchup of unbeatens. I like Belleville over Silsby. To 3A Division 1 we go. I think Franklin wins a rematch with Little River Academy. Give me Goliad to take down Blanco, and I'm going with Winsboro to edge Whitney. In 3A Division 2, I think regional favorites stay hot. I like Gunner over Comanche, and give me Canadian to take down Idaho. Tidehaven surges past Rogers, and I think Newton gets a little bit of revenge from last year. I think they knock off Harmony. In 2A Division 1, I'm going with Toller over Italy. Give me Stratford over New Deal. And Refurio takes down Weimer. 2A Division 2 now, I like Groover over Clarendon. And give me Collinsville to beat Roscoe. Flip a coin in this one, but I like Bremond over Fall City. And Mart 
stays perfect with a win over Deweyville. It's regional final week in six-man football. In 1A Division II, I think Cherokee avenges a regular season loss to rich rival Richland Springs. And in 1A Division I, give me the defending state champs Westbrook to take down Borden County. And Jonesboro beats district rival May. And those are the picks. I picked all 88 UIL Texas High School football playoff games on this Thanksgiving weekend, so you can let me know very gently in the comments what am I wrong about. Leave comments down below. Don't forget that subscribe button. Follow us on Twitter at DCTF. Like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Dave Campbells. Follow us on Instagram, instagram.com slash Dave Campbells. And, of course, see us at texasfootball.com, where you can find complete coverage of the 2023 Texas High School football playoffs at texasfootball.com slash playoffs. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the regional semifinals of the Texas High School football playoffs. Happy Thanksgiving. We'll see you.